so we don't lose the sun. But um, we're obviously in the Rocky Intertidal out here at Rancho Marino. This is a re this is a MPA, right? So marine protected area off here. Um, wow, the waves are nice and small right now. Um, okay, so fantastic. We mostly have south of Point Conception. We mostly have sandy beaches, right? So we're really enriched with fun places to put your towel on. Um, much of Central California and Northern California are enriched with rocky beaches, right? Um, so here we have the, the neat thing where we get critters are able to settle on that hard surface, right? And so the classic thing we see, which is first described by a guy named Ed Ricketts in a book called Between Pacific Coast Tides, is one of the most important patterns of this, which is animals responding to a abiotic stress. Turns out it's both animals responding to abiotic stress and biotic stress. The abiotic stress for the marine critters is the air. So if you're in the ocean, being in the air is hard. So we see, we see adaptations for critters to be able to live higher and higher and higher out of the water. At the same time, generally speaking, what we see influencing the other direction is competition, biological interaction, predation. Both the stuff works on both ways, but but um, we have critters. So it turns out the critters that are highest in the intertidal are able to withstand desiccation, drying out. Um, either they clamp up, or they have really thick skin, or something of that nature. And as we go into the water, we see critters that have less and less ability to withstand drying. And so all that comes together to create is different bands. So some critters tend to be in this band. Others are in the next lower band. Others the next lower band. And we see that as so-called zonation. We see it with different color bands. We see it different, different shapes of critters. So that's, uh, that's basic intertidal ecology 101 in 30 seconds. Um, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go out into this field, right? And we're gonna walk around. Now most of this is bench. Most of this is solid. But there will be moving rocks in here. So we wanna be real careful. We don't wanna twist an ankle. We don't wanna fall down. We don't wanna fall down and cut ourselves, nothing like that. But so um, what you'll do is come over here and take a quick look while we're, we're talking. Okay, here we're at the Rancho Marino Preserve and we're doing uh, our limpet surveys now that it's low tide. And we want to do it quick as we're talking about on the trip, if you were on the trip. And right now we're just looking underneath kelp and this general low tide, very rocky area for our limpets and calling out to Dr. A right over there to determine the sizes. So we're looking at them and determine if they're centimeters. They tend to be pretty flat, so right now we're just looking through them. And here's actually where we're gonna be spending the night up on that terrace where it's nice and pretty alongside some pines actually, which is one of the only, well, I think it's Montgomery pines. along the area so this seems to be a pretty fun time right now we just completed the owl surveys and now we're just walking around exploring for a couple of minutes before that sunset and all sets. Right now, we're just walking around Phyllis Spadix I think that's what it's called some kelp and a lot of hermit crabs actually like this guy There you go. He doesn't want to come out right now, but he's definitely there. And they're all over the place here. There's also plenty of anemones that are cool. pretty cool and very scary, only because I am horrified of stepping on them. But it seems to be pretty interesting. Plenty of seagulls, some turkey vultures. A very beautiful sight in general. So ago, um, my friend is down over there and he notices there's a baby gray whale washing in the shore. So he kind of washing up essentially where we were just starting out surveying. So he went down, grabbed a rope, threw it around his tail and tied it off and waited for the tide to go out. Then he went and got his tractor and threw a chain around his tail and drag it up, drug it up that place where he just worked. He just kept dragging it and left it here. So the plan is to eventually articulate it by putting it back together for an educational display. But he left it here, at first he left it here, he's like, okay, cool, and then, you know, he just let it, you know, it's out here, not near the house, so he just decays for a while, and very quickly discovered that the coyotes were coming up and a bunch of them. So 
So then he came and he put a fence around. This is a, this is a new fence, but he put a fence around to keep guys away from it. And it's basically been breaking down. You know, all the all the fat and the muscles are all gone. But this is essentially a baby gray whale.